chalet to everybody. Uh, thank you for joining the seminar. Uh, this is the seminar in the series of uh, the seminars by Heritage Network. Before we had a few one, I will not list for you because uh, I don't, I, I, I lost the count. And uh, I am very glad to see that we have many participants and the moment 28 all together. And today the presentation in general will be devoted to a vibration problem. And the presentations will be given by two professors, one professor from India and the second professor from Germany. Sorry, but I will not list your names because I'm sure by the presentation, you will uh, just introduce yourself by the slides and by talking. And now I invite you to, to participate in the seminar. But before we start, uh, let's agree the, the frame. That means the, my question to the presenters, how you prefer to answer the question after finishing your talk or uh, yes, you, yes, that will after, be better. After finishing, that will okay. be better. Okay, that now just the message to all participants. Uh, if you have any questions, please keep in mind and ask the presenters after uh, after finishing the presentation. And who will be the first presenter? Uh, I will start. Uh, please, okay. please. Thank yes. you very much. Yes, that first, the floor, virtual floor, is taken by uh, Professor... Herr Professor Arkan. Yes, that <laughs> please start. I hope that you can see my screen now. Is it possible? Yes, yes. yes. perfect. 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 Uh, also, good morning and good afternoon from by me, the dear ladies and gentlemen, Dear Visa President, Vice President Teresa, uh, thank you very much for this great possibility to give a talk with my colleagues from India about our research work. I am very uh, happy about it and also thank you very much to Heritage Network to organize this event. IIT Danbat and we collaborate each other since already more than three years, including PhDs, and we will publish a work together very soon. And I think that this collaboration will be more and more stronger. Uh, and today I would like to talk, as you know, that uh, strongly on our subject vibration monitoring and diagnostics and whole body vibrations. This is the topic of today's talk and some research uh, investigations, which I will explain to the, today, were conducted within the excellence cluster SETI and to find solution for the existing challenges, it is necessary to conduct uh, multidisciplinary research. And today's topics include also different aspects, not only sensors, which I will explain, signal processing or modeling, but also telecommunication, security, human related subjects are very important. Therefore, we uh, try to combine this kind of research in this excellence cluster. If I start with a short uh, content of my presentation, I will start with a short introduction. Then I will talk about vibration monitoring, uh, challenges, sensors, signal processing, analysis and modeling and pattern recognition. And then I will continue it with whole body vibration perception. And then I will conclude and give the talk my Indian colleagues. As I already said, I start with uh, the first points, introduction and vibration monitoring. And uh, here we see some products, uh, some structures. These are the daily life products, daily life structures. And most of them, uh, most of these products generate some vibrations and this, at the same time sound. And this plays in daily life very strong role on their perception and also in in the interaction with these devices. Not only, of course, products, also structures starts to uh, vibrate and generate some uh, sounds. Therefore, it is very important to understand the vibrational behavior. For it, we use uh, different 
physical measurement methodologies or simulation methodologies to under, understand uh, vibration behavior of this kind of products. It means that uh, there are strong work on the physical side uh, to understand this vibrational behavior. And after that, of course, we have some designed vibrations and these uh, vibrations can give us different information related the health of the product, quality of the product or process, and also information about the process. And these kind of informations are important to use them and perceive them as a good or bad product. And therefore it plays strong role to understand how we can understand their vibrational behavior and the related information. And in the production or manufacturing, it plays strong role because in that case, of course, we have a lot of different machines and structures. And in that case, vibration monitoring gains more and more importance, not only for the manufacturing and production at smart fabrics, but also, of course, as I already explained, the daily life applications and using vibration monitoring and diagnostics, it is possible to increase the productivity to ensure the high quality production and to inform about the operational steps. For example, in these pictures, we see some uh, blades and uh, we can understand before they will be uh, destroy, uh, destroyed uh, and notice uh, the vibrational behavior and then we can give uh, some measures related to it. Of course, in classical way, for example, in fabrics, uh, there are mostly talented and experienced plant and maintenance engineers they can feel in some cases there will be some problems with these machines or mo electric motors, for example, in this example, and uh, take some uh, measures. But of course, in the future, we would like to automize it and make much more sophisticated smart systems. And therefore we have different challenges, but I would like to talk in uh, my presentation. And I took as example, for example, electric motors in this case, and also washing machines. If we take into account, for example, electric motors, we have more than 400 different vibration patterns, which uh, caused about different operational sta states, but also failure or information. Uh, and depending on them, we can decide how, which kind of measures are important and we can give also uh, design uh, decisions. And as I already listed here, there are different descriptions of them. And for us, very important point is to understand, okay, uh, which physical reason is behind of it and is it good or is it bad? And we would like to give this information to the customer of these products or uh, at the fab, uh, factory to the maintenance engineers, or we would like to skip them and reduce them. As I already said that I would like to talk about different challenges regarding uh, vibration monitoring and failure. And in that case, I will start with the sensors. Uh, the development of the and integration of low weight, small size, uh, low cost sensors to the products or to the structures uh, at the manufacturing line uh, is a very important point. And in that case, of course, we try to develop in most cases, uh, very small low weight, low cost sensors. In that case, of course, MEMS technologies deliver us very nice opportunities. But at the same time, if we take into account, of course, uh, we need mostly uh, flexible sensors. And if we can print them, it can uh, increase our availabilities and application of several sensors at one product. Therefore, very important research topic in our area is the printed flexible sensors. And in that case, I would like to also introduce that to my colleague at my chair, uh, junior professor Anidia Nak, also who is working at Excellence Cluster SETI, uh, develop different technologies for printed flexible sensors. Also at my chair, we try to develop different technologies based on piezoelectric, dielectric elastomer sensors, 
and also nanocomposite-based or graphene-based uh, printable flexible sensors. And, uh, and in that domain, there's a strong interest to uh, develop them for the vibration monitoring. From the other side, of course, we know all of us has some smartphones and they have very cheap cameras, uh, very low quality cameras. But if we check the pictures of uh, these uh, cameras, we notice that the quality is mostly higher and higher and it will be higher, although they are very cheap and very low quality cameras. And the reason behind of it is the signal processing. It means that uh, mostly the trend is in that domain to make smart signal processing to increase the quality of the data, which we have also for vibration. And therefore we try uh, at our chair to develop different analysis methodologies, uh, signal processing technologies uh, to give correct decisions. For example, in this picture, we see similar uh, different kind of uh, vibrations and sounds. And take uh, in this case, uh, this is Fourier analysis and uh, Campbell diagrams of them. But although it is the same signal as we see above and below, depending on the FFT length, uh, you can see very different results. And depending on this result, of course, the decision can be very different. It means that the correct and intelligent signal processing and analysis is very important topic in this point. And using it uh, for different kinds of vibrations of these products uh, gains more and more importance. And as I already said that uh, in most cases, it is very important to get also uh, the feeling of the quality because in some cases the vibration can give us a feeling that okay this is a high quality product or low quality product or it can give us information about uh, forecasting for failure and also of course interaction for the user and in most cases of course depending of the different characteristics depending of the different aspects of the signal we should decide uh, which uh, signal properties should be used for the diagnostics for the quality measurement and so on and in that case of course temporal aspects but also frequency spectral aspects uh, play strong role for vibration but at the same uh, domain also for sound and we try to adapt them depending of the of course problem and uh, this is not only for for example electric motors also uh, for washing machines uh, interest interesting also for man manufacturing but also for uh, medical applications for example surgery robotics and in the excellence cluster with uh, professor stefanie uh, spidel and uh, other professors, we try to understand how we can adapt it uh, for such kind of robotic applications. And in that case, uh, particularly vibrations give in some cases to the operators very useful information. It means that in that case, vibrations or sounds can be used to increase the quality of the surgery operation. But in some cases, uh, we should reduce them and we should observe that the uh, operational robot functions properly. And depending on these decisions, we can give, of course, measures. And uh, taking into account these issues, of course, automatization is a very important point. And uh, therefore, we try to develop some algorithms based on uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning to give uh, data-based uh, actually decisions. And for it, of course, in most cases, we need a lot of data, which causes in most cases big problem because uh, most of the, for example, companies, uh, manufacturers of these machines don't want to install cloud solutions and use uh, artificial intelligence because in that case, of course, this data can be used by university or by other uh, companies and therefore they try to find solution only closed uh, domain and in that case also security plays strong role databases and uh, depending of industry uh, 4.0 we try to adapt different solutions and in that case of course there are 
different ideas for machine learning uns unsupervised or supervised and multi-channel solutions play strong role. As I already said that in the second part, in the last part of my talk, I would like to talk a little bit about the perception of product vibrations, whole body vibrations, development of models, because as I already introduced that we should analyze the vibration signals and in most cases taking into account the pers uh, persons, the human who uses these machines and if they perceive these vibrations or not plays strong role. And at the same time for the quality perception, it is very important to conduct such kind of research. Therefore, we try to adapt to both uh, directions. And at the same time also with uh, IIT, Done, but we try to develop some ideas regarding, for example, annoyance caused by such kind of whole body vibrations, how we can describe it, how we can uh, measure it. And in that case, uh, we have long experience with psychoacoustics. In psychoacoustics, there are different uh, actually analysis modeling algorithms based on loudness perception, sharpness perception, and so on. And for the vibrations, of course, in most cases, we should take into account the uh, properties of the body in the uh, physical side, but at the same time, perceptual aspects play a strong role. Therefore, several PhD students in my chair conduct research to understand the perceptual aspects of the vibrations, whole body or arm vibrations, and depending on them, uh, describe models and uh, make analysis algorithms. And in that case, depending of the frequency, depending of the temporal aspects, change our perception. And depending on them, uh, also we should adapt uh, the models. And in that case, of course, physiological aspects play a strong role because mechanoreceptors are responsible for the whole body vibration or hand or arm vibration perception. But at the same time, there are different kinds of masking effects. For example, low frequencies masks the high frequencies similar to the MP3. Uh, we don't perceive some signal parts and this plays also very important role for the modeling and similar kind of issues. And using these models, we try to develop also design algorithms, for example, for annoyance, uh, which will be perceived if we drive with a car or with a earth moving machines. And uh, depending on these algorithms, we give also design decisions. And in that domain, we use uh, some laboratories. Unfortunately, because of the corona situation, uh, I will not uh, visit the laboratory, but I will show a video to introduce uh, in this laboratory, we conduct uh, several whole body vibration perception experiments and using uh, the platform, which you can see in this uh, picture, this is a hydraulic platform, which gives us the possibility, high amount of movement to realize, for example, from earth moving machines, but also from the cars or different kind of uh, vehicles. But at the same time, using electrodynamic shakers, we have possibility to go to the higher frequencies. But in this laboratory, we don't only conduct uh, vibration experiments, also for auditory experiments. Therefore, we have more than 464 loudspeakers. And I would like to show this video uh, to introduce this laboratory. My uh, student actually uh, have conducted some research. I hope that uh, I can. Show it shortly. Oh, we cannot hear the sound there again. Okay, uh, possibly uh, one moment I should. Uh, click also the sound uh, exactly thank you very much for the <laughs> feedback i hope that this time it's in our multimodal yeah. measurement laboratory which i'm going to show you now 
So it consists of an of a optical reproduction system in the form of a projector. And uh, of course we also need uh, acoustic reproduction and for this we have a wave field synthesis system. It consists of 464 loudspeakers that are everywhere around the room. And with these loudspeakers we can uh, generate virtual sound sources at any point in the room just like they would appear in a real environment. And of course we also have our vibration reproduction system consists of an electrodynamic shaker below the seat and also we have a hydraulic motion platform that uh, has a motion space of plus minus uh, 300 millimeters and uh, with the motion platform we can produce a peak acceleration of 1G. So if we would operate all the three systems simultaneously, this is what such an experience would feel like. Unfortunately, sound recording is not so good, uh, but uh, video recording is good. I hope that uh, it was possible to get a feeling, but uh, of course I invite uh, all of you to visit us. Uh, we are not very far away from uh, Poland and uh, also from India. Uh, I hope very much that uh, soon it will be possible to visit each other and uh, show it in real life experiments. Uh, I hope that now you can see my slides. And uh, using uh, also this uh, laboratory, we conduct also whole body vibration design experiments because we can generate also vehicle dynamics, dynamics and uh, depending of uh, this information and using also sound, uh, we uh, try to generate, for example, not only uh, unpleasant uh, or pleasant uh, vibrations, but also sporty and different kind of vibrations. As I already said that uh, I would like to finish my talk uh, because of course uh, I would like to give also the word uh, to my Indian colleagues, but uh, I hope very, uh, very much that uh, maybe in summer it will be good possibility to visit each other. And uh, I would like to invite you to Dresden and uh, not uh, only see our laboratory, also see our opera. And <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very much for your Thank attention. You. Excellent presentation, sir. Very, Thank very you for excellent. a very interesting talk. And now the presentation is open for discussion, questions, that please. Uh, that uh, I suggest that just you will start. I think that will be who is the first asking the question, please. I do not see. Okay, please. From that. <laughs> yeah. Professor Arkan, can we also implement those things for flight simulators, not only for the automobile? Uh, yes, it, it is possible uh, to integrate it because uh, the possibilities are uh, very strong in the physical domain. Uh, it, it should function. And we have also a very nice idea uh, to control or monitor the uh, welding processes with Professor Somnat. Uh, I think uh, this is also another uh, nice, uh, interesting point. Thank you. Uh, thank you. From my side, one question, sir. Actually, uh, uh, yeah, you are, uh, what, what will be the approximate cost of the tender setup facility? Uh, do you mean with custom? Uh, the price, uh, pri uh, the cost price of, of the yes. price of this system. Uh, all, all laboratory uh, uh, cost was about two point five million euros. euros. It is a uh, very uh, expensive, but at the same time, uh, what I can say that we try to uh, develop with the manufacturers. Um, uh, uh, the uh, motion platform, which generates very low if uh, artifacts, uh, because for research, it is very important not to have harmonics, for example, if we generate some uh, frequencies in some cases in hydraulic systems, it is possible to get some uh, harmonics and we try to reduce them using different principles, but uh, also there are uh, mufflers uh, depending of the sound generation of the system. 
Uh, yeah. This caused a strong amount of costs, but at the same time, of course, uh, it is possible to make it uh, in basic domain. And uh, I can imagine that this can be a cheap solution. Very nice. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, Professor Sagar, please, the question. Yeah. Uh, hello, Professor. That was a very nice presentation. Uh, I am a PhD student from uh, Materials Department, IIT Bombay. Okay. I am also working You're with uh, vibration monitoring, mm -hmm. uh, 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 like using the triboelectric devices. So, uh, my question is regarding what type of sensors are you developing? Are you only using the uh, commercial accelerometer based sensors for your experiments, or are you also developing uh, vibrations, uh, specific vibration sensors at your laboratory? Um, mostly, we try to adapt uh, different sensor technologies, uh, but at the same time, uh, it, at our laboratory, as I already introduced, that graphene-based and also uh, laser cutting-based uh, uh, electro uh, electro development is a very important uh, topic. Uh, we uh, have uh, different corporations with uh, sensor uh, actually uh, producers in Dresden. Uh, and uh, adapt their uh, piezoelectric type uh, technologies uh, to the, our applications. And uh, as I already said, that uh, mostly uh, based on uh, the electric elastomer and also uh, graphene based uh, technologies. Thank you, Professor. Thank you okay, any, any other question? Uh, there is a question in the chat. Okay, uh, let's us see in the chat. Uh, yes, uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, thank you for your wonderful presentation. I am doing my research on electric motors. This field is completely new to me. Can you please suggest me how to uh, start my study on vibrations of motors uh, or a good reference? Uh, I can send you a good reference. Uh, uh, please uh, send you send me please uh, your email address, and I will send you uh, some suggestions. Okay, that uh, I, I hope that the question, uh, the person who was asking, uh, uh, perceived the response. That please send the message to Professor Erkan, and you will get the advice. Any other question? Uh, I, uh, there are so many participants that I cannot see the, the whole list uh, to see the raised hands, that if I am not noticing, please just uh, talk. But I do not see that maybe I will ask that uh, at our university, uh, the faculty who is doing the vibration study is faculty of transportation, that I am faculty for aeronautics and applied mechanics. I send a message about the seminar. However, the problem is that uh, still there are the students' classes, and uh, this is by the end of the exam session. But I saw that uh, they are doing many diploma works and the other works that it is, uh, uh, I can, uh, that what I am saying, he was telling about the visiting uh, the by Polish group or visiting exactly. Poland, that uh, I, I saw the common points because uh, the, exactly. testing, the, the vibration testing is very, very important topic. Even uh, I, uh, um, I remember because even in my faculty, aeronautics, that my people were testing the vibrations. They developed by themselves uh, the testing stand, a bit similar uh, like yours, however simpler, because that was years ago. That uh, And they, they were doing the tests, the human, uh, how the human behaves. And also in Poland, we have the uh, big uh, government center of uh, occupational biomechanics. Mm -hmm. And they, they, I'm sure they do such a test that again, this is the common point. But my question is very simple, quite trivial, because you, uh, it seems that you, you are testing the human being. Uh, do you need the permission? That means this, because this is the biological experiment. My question is if doing such a research for a projects and so on, that 
can you tell a few words about the formalities? It is easy, not easy, uh, who, who is used, who is involved in the test, uh, the staff, or is all maybe the, uh, the persons who are really uh, affected to the vibrations? Just the comment on this issue, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. This is a very important topic. Uh, exactly. Uh, we need uh, ethical improvement uh, that we can conduct uh, this project. Uh, and uh, this is not so easy. What uh, our experience says, although, of course, uh, we conduct since several years, therefore, there is a you know, standard procedure at the university. But mostly such kind of ethical discussions are more, uh, related to the medical aspects, for example, uh, vaccine or medic, uh, medicaments. And uh, they don't know very much about whole body vibrations or sound explosion and so on. And uh, therefore, we always should introduce also the levels which can be dangerous for women. And we should uh, show that uh, our total exposure is under uh, uh, these levels to get a approval. And in most cases, uh, there is no big problem to get it, but it takes, of course, some time because of the uh, information exchange. But what I know that also uh, I give supervision to the European uh, Union Commission related artificial intelligence based uh, systems. And in this topic, exactly, it is very difficult to define ethical issues because uh, the systems uh, behave not always as expected. And depending on the uh, users and the reactions, uh, the reaction of the system can change. And therefore, this plays a strong role for this kind of research. And during the preparation of slides, I thought also the cooperation with you, because I know also in robotics, you have very nice actually research and uh, research facilities and also other topics and uh, Warsaw and uh, Dresden are very near to each other and very nice to also to visit. I will visit you and please uh, come to my lab. Uh, you are very welcome, and maybe in the future it will come with some common projects. We are very interested in cooperation, I should say. Uh, but uh, if I may, I have one more question. Uh, that, oh, but, but just finishing, we can arrange also the cooperation with the Institute of Occupational Mechanics that we, we, we can be involved, and also the big institute with very good equipment that we are interested. Okay, but the, the, the last question. Uh, from my side. Uh, the, uh, you said about using a neural network uh, for the processing the data. And uh, as we know well, the neural networks can act uh, very, very nicely. But however, we are uh, never sure if uh, they always will be reliable. That my question is, if using the neural network, are you adding some safety mechanism just in case uh, something will happen, uh, the, the, the neural network will produce uh, the wrong out. Uh, this is necessary. You are absolutely right. Uh, the main problem what we have is that the amount of data what we use for the training is very limited in comparison to much more commercial systems as for example, Google or similar kind of companies do. Uh, therefore, we should uh, always be very careful use, uh, usage of this technology. And uh, therefore we try to define also metrics to see that which kind of input causes which kind of outputs because at the end, of course, it's a black box and it's a dangerous black box. And uh, to understand this black box, we try to conduct several uh, input uh, and output research to understand that how we react the system. And at the same time to define, depending of the, of course, answer of the ANN of which uh, reactions will be done. Uh, and in that case, we define some physical limitations. Otherwise it can be exactly dangerous. Uh, okay, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, 
Maybe we can move to the next part of the webinar, and if there are some questions left, uh, they can be kept for yes, the end. Sure, sure. I do not see any questions. Anyway, that please now uh, the floor is in uh, the hands in the hands of our Indian colleagues, and uh, who will be the first? Please start. And switch on the microphone, please. Right. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. I will just give a short presentation um, on the vibration monitoring of a uh, big instrument. There is a dinosaurial uh, equipment and very specially relevant for our uh, area of competence. And then Professor Samidas will uh, discuss about the whole body, whole body. Diagnostic. But now I will do for vibration analysis for a, a little different aspects in terms of the operation. And this is relevant to, so I'll go to the next slide, surface minor. This is a very, very big machines. Germany is making such machines. And Poland is also known for this very big dinosaurial fabrication of those machines. So the left part is the surface minor. And why the picture is there? Because cutting drums are shown. The bottom part is shown, the cutting drum. And the right part is the LNT surface minor. And uh, this KSM means Kanswa, where LNT, while uh, uh, Germany is collaborating with us to have a uh, steel plant at Raukella, they have opened a factory for fabrication. And that is known, that is Kanswa. So Kanswa surface minor, KSM. And 404, this four meter is the drum. So the right part, it is put into some part of Orissa and it is doing huge amount of productivity, maybe maybe 800 to 1000 tons per hour. It can dig out and that kind of mining it can do mainly in the coal, coal area. Next. And the main, the center forward, the center forward of this instrument is the cutting drum along with the cutting picks. So why vibration is important? Because the geology and all those things, the surfaces are not under in control. If you go for manufacturing, where my area is there, where the surfaces and their behavior pattern is under control and they have the isotropic properties. But the problem with the geological surfaces when people start mining, the coal and those seams are not perfectly horizontal. So uh, apart from coal, the sandstone, the shells, all those things are coming with a different universal compressive strength and vibration monitoring through which we should know what is the material. And according to that, we can control uh, the rotations of these very big things. If it is not done, the problem is that huge amount of wear and tear will take place in the cutting picks. Next. So one can see this, the rotating drum with the different configuration of the picks. They are just going through that surfaces and taking out of those holes and other part of it. And that is solid for that. And and that is the um, uh, main operations. And the peak lacing also has a very big role to play. And it is rotating uh, within some few uh, meters per minute. And according to that, they will do go for this cutting form. Next. And this is the thing that uh, apart from this vibration monitoring, what we have to do, we have to know what are the layers are there in the geological surfaces. And this man is um, experimenting with the skimmed hammer to know from the vibrations or called pulsations so that what can be the probable uh, uniaxial compressive strength because to know that different layers what kind and according to that the strategies of surface mining will be done on the basis of that. Next. So we can see the different different classes are there. Sometimes coal is there, it's a soft within 30 megapascal. Then beyond that, it will be shell, and the hardest one is the sandstone. So one has to measure and find it out what are the layers are there inside. And this is a good graph. One can find it out that what will be the production, because we are very much associated with the productivity part of it and what kind of production we can have and what kind of rock types and that will be the material removal rate. So it is starting from zero to 30, it will be coal, uh, then bauxite, dolomite and all those things, limestone, 
it will be 30 to 50 and the productivity comes down as an exponential curves. Then you will go for the limestone where 50 to 100 and then sandstone and dolomite and then granite where the megapascal will be increasing and the productivity also coming down. So we have to understand that next. So this is the cutting pick, broken pick, though it is made of tungsten carbide. It is a, it is a Swedish innovation tungsten hard stone, heavy stone, that carbide along with the cobalt will make the front end part of it, but it is also getting damaged if the hard things are there. So we have to know what is the material and through vibration monitoring, we will know the material and according to that, we will do that. And this is the most com consumable part of any surface miner. Next, we have, because of some good funded project from Department of Science and Technology, we are just building these cutting, these cutting rig lab model so that we can uh, just uh, miniaturize and model and simulate the operations of a cutting drum in the different kind of surfaces to know what are the forces, what are the, what are the accelerations, so this displacement, uh, velocity acceleration, and according to that, we find it out what can be the optimum parameters. Next, our main objective will be the vibration monitoring of the cutting drums, both at the lab and the field. We are doing it at the lab, but though the field is very big, in situ conditions are more challenging. We have different mines, and you know that we have also discovered the second largest coal mines in some part of Eastern India. So huge amount of tilted, huge amount of mining activity, especially coal, coal mining has to be done and with those things. And feature extraction from the captured vibration data to analyze the differentiation between coal, shale and limestone so that we can control those parameters related to surface miners and according to that. And last, the fixation of the strategies for controlling operating parameters for different surfaces encountered by the surface miners and the surface miner operator cannot understand so that we want to do some kind of mechanical assessment associated. Next. Uh, I think I have missed out one, one page. Okay, so that is overall uh, the purpose of my talk to vibration monitoring of the surface miners to know what are the different geological conditions, or geological conditions, conditions and according to that the strategies of the running of the parameters and process control parameters of the surface miner will be uh, controlled. Thank you. Thank you very much for a very interesting presentation and uh, very complimentary to the first one. And now please ask the questions. Okay, who is first? Oh, yes, Erkan, please. <laughs> yes, uh, maybe I can start with a question. Uh, please, please. Uh, the level or, or uh, uh, the acceleration level in this, uh, actually, uh, mining machines uh, are in which level? Uh, I can tell you it may be, say, uh, uh, the cutting drum is rotating, say, 30, 40, 60 meters per minute. Okay. And the cutting down diameter is, it is in the uh, uh, specification, it is four meter drum. Uh, and then we maybe say uh, a couple of times of that. So that is the thing. And we are placing all those accelerometers in different positions in the shaft and other part of it to see the three, three directional, what is the vibrations, mm -hmm. what are their peaks and a 50 and all that <laughs> part of it to know its track. When it is cutting coal, what is its behavior? When it is cutting sandstone, what is its behavior? And uh, what they, when it is cutting shale. The problem is that in the night, people are finding it out that it has encountered hard rock and so much of wear and tear takes place. Mm -hmm. So machine has no control uh, to know that this is the thing and this is the vibration. This is the signature of the hard. So go, go uh, slower and console. So that is the problem of dealing with these things and it has whatever geological exploration you do you cannot tell what is exactly happened whenever you are inquiring of that so vibration can be a game changer analysis in order to operate that very costly machine and poland is also making such machines <laughs> i know that the operators here operators here in danbad area a lot of people are using some of the polish words how do you know because the people, Polish engineers came here and installed and many of the machines like mine winders are from Poland. Poland is a country where very, along with the Germany, very, very strong 
in making big machines related to the mining applications. Oh, okay. We are learning something <laughs> new. <laughs> I was not knowing. Uh, any other question, please? Uh, Did you conduct some survey with drivers of uh, these machines? Uh, because we they, of course, they're... Uh, we have some company, the NK Instruments, they are providing us the different accelerometers. We are putting those accelerometers both at the mines, but the mines are very difficult places, inaccessible places, along with our model. And we have, along with that, fabricator, LNG, who are the fabricator of all those surface drums. So three way with one instrument manufacturing, one who is surface drum manufacturing company, along with the education person, uh, so we three are working together to find it out that the right kind of cutting drum with different kind of cutting picks to get the best performance. Uh, okay. So and uh, then, yeah. Prof. Yeah. Can, and then Professor Swamidas will start. Uh, okay. I'm presenting related to this whole body vibration. Uh, can I start my presentation? I, at the end, we can Of course, have please, questions. please go ahead. Hmm. Please. Uh, yes, uh, actually, I am Kumar Swamidas, uh, Associate Professor in IIT Dhanbad. Actually, today I am going to present a human response to vibration in heavy earth moving missionaries. Actually, no, uh, if, uh, uh, um, uh, actually, if anybody, any human being have to be a success in their life, actually, which one is important? Uh, I like to ask with the people. But because here interaction is very limited, so I like to tell the answer also. Actually, if any person have to success in their personal life or, pers uh, or professional life, or any company success, or any uh, industrial success, or any community how to live success, actually the health, good health is uh, very, very important. Actually, if uh, someone is having a good health, he can be success in the profession and he can be success in uh, in their uh, personal life. Otherwise, uh, if uh, industry also success behind of the employees, if the employees have the good health, then only he can able to contribute to the industry. So the main focus to the human community is uh, good health. If the good health is there, always the wealth will be good. So if we have to be a good health, the body how to be we are every day we are exposed with a lot of activities each and every activities involved with some effect on our body so one of the effect is the whole body vibration actually in our day-to-day -day life by knowingly or unknowingly we expose with the whole body vibration and hand on vibrations prolonged working shift and noise pollution these are all the factors. These are the four important factors. We are everyone in the in the world exposed with these three, four important factors in our day-to-day -day life. It is exposed to our human body. And if some people are working with the industry, it is exposed and the manufacturing industries and all, the exposure of the these factors will be more influencing the human body. Actually, here I have shown the each and every organs in our body uh, by, will be exposed more in this particular range of frequencies. Actually, the whole body vibration is uh, the factor. Actually, it is uh, uh, transferred. The uh, machine vibration is transferred to the human body through the uh, food as well as uh, the backrest or seat. Now, mainly here we are uh, mainly focusing on the research related to the whole body vibration of uh, mining equipment and operators. So the mining equipment uh, operators, the whole body vibration is transferred to the uh, buttocks or the operator seat or foot. These are the main source to transfer the vibration to the human body or operator. 
okay so in that x axis uh, vibration is through the backrest and y axis the vibration through the side uh, rest and uh, the z axis vibration through foot or buttocks so for uh, and uh, for analyzing uh, we have the standards uh, the iso 2631 part 1 uh, and european union uh, directory uh, directive so so many other uh, uh, standards are uh, are there to uh, uh, limit the whole body vibration and the similar to that hand arm vibration also a very very important factors if we are uh, uh, exposed with the uh, continuous prolong of vibrations uh, you no know, for example if we are writing the uh, more if you are writing more also it influences uh, the muscles on the hand similarly if we are uh, the jack hammer hammer drills and so many equipments we are using in mines and other applications too so those are when we are operating that also it will expose to our hands that will leads to the damage or uh, some uh, effect to our uh, human body that also should be avoided that actually we have the standard iso 5349 uh, part 1 49 part 1 the other influencing factors also poor drivers posture and the poor design of uh, uh, control uh, making the effect of uh, operators and uh, visibility of the drivers these are the other factors influence the uh, operator uh, to uh, reduce the per performance of the operation actually if we uh, uh, analyze the whole body vibration or hand arm vibration and if we uh, kept that in the limit uh, the human body can able to accept so if we maintain that uh, kind of, if we monitor continuously and if we maintain it will increase the production it will increase the life of the machine it will increase the uh machine availability and maintenance cost it will reduce the maintenance cost and it will reduce the pro product product cost and operating cost and so many factors related to the development of the industry it will influence so it is the very very important factor to be considered if for the success of an industry actually if we have the facility uh, of uh, for measuring the whole body vibration we have the facility of uh, seat pad accelerometer and floor uh, seat accelerometer and uh, human vibration analyzer through that we try to measure the vibration levels and we try to um, do the design modifications on the uh, seats or operators uh, seats uh, suspension systems through that we try to improve and maintain the vibration level that leads to uh, the operator's comfort as well as the improve the uh, performance of the entire yeah, and uh, for that uh, we have two standards already i told for measure for uh, uh, measuring the whole body vibrations we have iso 2631 part 1 and uh, Uh, for uh, hand arm vibration uh, we have iso 5349 part 1 these are the two standards mostly all over the world we try to follow and uh, some of uh, european standards also available and australian uh, standards uh, british standards are also available but uh, mostly we uh, in india we are following these standards actually this is the basic fundamental uh, evaluation of whole body vibration actually in that uh, the few terminologies are mainly used uh, that is the crest factor the crest factor is the uh, peak acceleration divided by rms acceleration if uh, the crest factor level it is uh, more okay uh, for any operations uh, if it is more than 9 we have to consider the vibration dose value if the press factor level it is less than 9 we have to go for the rms value actually this is the time period of any particular signal and this is the peak acceleration normally the rms acceleration is the average of all the uh, vibration signal the total vibration signal but here the vdb value we used to consider mainly or through the peak acceleration wherever what are the peak acceleration are where we will be taking the average of the peak acceleration that is the vdb value the peak acceleration divided by the rms acceleration value will give the crest factor 
these are the important factors to be considered for uh, analyzing this uh, whole body vibration and uh, as per the standard uh, as per the standard uh, health uh, health guidance uh, caution zone uh, the uh, limited values are given for the different accelerations uh, this uh, weighted uh, acceleration value and vdv value and weighted uh, acceleration value for iso european standard and different uh, uh, standards uh, these are the values and uh, uh, the whole body vibration health issues uh, it will create the health issues uh, the back pain back injury and muscular fatigue uh, these are the different uh, effects uh, it will be developed uh, uh, due to this whole body vibration level exceeds and uh, this is the lumbar disc uh, disorders uh, happen due to the, these are the different lumbar disc disorders happen if we are not maintaining the whole body vibration levels uh, these are the hand on vibration due to that uh, hand on vibration effect uh, this is the uh, these are the effects uh, will happen on the human body um these are the symptoms i'll actually uh, one case study actually we are uh, doing research uh, related to this uh, mining uh, environment uh, and uh, mining vehicles in whole body uh, vibration uh, measurements that i like to present here for this uh, one as a one case study actually uh, this is the experimental uh, we are doing it in the field and uh, we used to consider actually this is the cycle of operation of the dumper while different uh, uh, road condition and different environmental condition different operator uh, uh, operators anthropomorphic uh, conditions and the body condition what will be the effect of uh, whole body vibration on the operator that we uh, practically uh, uh, did the conducted the experiment actually the total cycle of operations uh, actually the in the uh, uh, the total cycle of operation of the dumper first the loading the material will be loaded on the dumper and it will be with the loading condition it will be move on the haul road and it will be uh, dump the material then uh, during dumping what will be the vibration exposed and uh, with the unloading condition the dumper will be returned to the site to collect the material so in that time what is the vibration so that different cases are classified into four different conditions material loaded ml that represent in ml that is a material loading condition then unloaded travel then material uh, unloaded condition then uh, unloaded travel okay so these are the different conditions we measured the rms acceleration value and vdv value and press factors and we try to analyze the exposure uh, limit and uh, for that we considered uh, different uh, age criteria of our operators and years of experience of the operators weight of the uh, operator and height of the operator body mass index of the operators and these are the different anthropometrical parameters and these are the vehicle specifications we performed with the different combinations of experiments and we measured what will be the vibration level peak acceleration level in material loaded condition and uh, loaded travel met, un, uh, material unloaded condition and unloaded travel in this uh, different uh, uh, situations what will be the vibration exposure that we measured and we uh, analyzed uh, those uh, values uh, with the uh, graphs uh, vibration those value graphs what will be the limited value and uh, where it is exceeding based on that we modified the uh, uh, design of seats and we try to reduce the vibration level so in that way we are uh, doing uh, research uh, in this particular area okay so this is the brief uh, outline about my presentation any questions or any clarifications uh okay the presentation is now open for the questions please any questions yes uh who is willing to ask some question i do not see at the moment uh 
Maybe I will start. And then uh, that... Uh, <laughs> oh, okay, I see. Yes, that just uh, maybe, uh, please, Deepak, please, Deepak. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, okay, so the, the presentation right now is wonderful, given by everyone, okay? I'm, I want to thank you, everyone, for the presentation. My question particularly is like for the body vibration, what technique or are uh, the use for understanding them? Because in these days, the neural network and other things are using, being used a lot. And we see the accuracy or the dependency or what you call like, uh, how do you depend on that? Is it reliable or, or is, the, is there any other method to analyze the technique or, or the vibrations? Uh, actually, uh, no, uh, the back, are you able to hear? Hello? Can you hear? Can you hear, Deepak? Yes, I can. I can. Yes, actually, no, the uh, neural network and other techniques, AI techniques are to optimize the uh, design parameters to improve the vibration. Actually, for measuring, we used to have different instruments and uh, we have to measure through that instrument and uh, we can use these different techniques. Actually, we have a lot of optimization techniques, AI techniques. Through that, the measured data can be used to optimize the input parameters. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yes, the next question by Erkan, please. Uh, you show very nicely, actually, uh, in three axes, uh, there are different vibration behavior. Uh, and uh, ESO, of course, suggests some distribution of uh, the vibrations from three axes. But our experience is that uh, this suggestion does not work very well. Uh, do you have some ideas related to it? Uh, the, X, Y, Z axis, uh, vibration, exposure, and uh, their... Sweat. Yes, actually, you know, the Z axis vibration, mostly we have, for uh, designing the seat and uh, mainly focusing towards the comfort of the operator, the Z axis vibration, the vertical axis vibration will be uh, mostly considered and uh, it will give a lot of influence uh, compared to the other axis. So, the vertical axis vibration will be uh, mostly influencing. Thank you. Uh, any other question? Uh, I wanted to ask about the magnitude because you were showing the table with, with the frequency uh, affecting uh, near to the resonant frequency of the body parts. But what about the magnitude? It is any knowledge concerning the, uh, despite of the frequency, the magnitude? which can be dangerous? Uh, yes, uh, actually, if uh, the uneven roads and the, uh, different conditions, uh, we have to see in some of the conditions, uh, it will be in dangerous uh, limit. Uh, that is the main objective to perform this uh, whole body vibration to understand uh, which, in the, uh, which situations the vibration limit, uh, limit uh, will be uh, exceeding and uh, how to avoid that uh, vibration uh, exposure uh, to the operator or machine. That is the main objective we have to... She is wanting to know that magnitude related any, any suggestion is there, apart from frequency. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, magnitude, uh, no, by modifying the uh, suspension design of the operator seats and uh, we can really modify the... We, so we can so reduce so the vibration, shock observer. Uh, that means you are uh, also recording the magnitude or just the frequency? Yes, uh, we have to control the jerk. Now, whether you are recording the magnitude also? Yes, yes, we are uh, recording the magnitudes and jerks and based on that we are modifying the uh, damping effect of the uh, suspension system. Okay, thank you, thank you. And uh, the one you said the suspension system, but before you mentioned that, uh, that those big uh, vehicles, they are bought abroad. That uh, my question is, uh, how uh, who modifies the the equipment, the seats? That if you locally modify, or you have uh, some feedback with the producer? We actually we uh, we we experimentally 
uh, do with uh, some modifications and we will see okay. the okay. locally we will do it and uh, then that recommendation will be given to the supplier and they used to modify according to that and they used to provide okay thank you thank you that it is uh, also very interesting research that in general that the vibration field is something which is very close to the human being and it is really very useful for our life to have such a knowledge and just to investigate the, the impact and another question i do not see that uh, at that point, I would like to thank to all the presenters. That was really, really very interesting seminar. And also to the participants that now we have 27, but I was uh, just monitoring the number that uh, the biggest number we have 34, that I think is a very good uh, participants, participation that it is just justifies that the topic which we selected is really uh, very interesting and I am very It's a vibrating excited. topic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a vibrating topic. Yeah. Exciting, exciting. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, also I am glad to know that uh, you cooperate and maybe in the future we will expand this cooperation. Sure. Uh, you, sure. you, you, yes, you need to know, for example, that in Poland we have some visiting professors uh, programs this is NAVA, that uh, every foreign professor can apply for internship in Poland. There is the agency. Uh, uh, the, I will send agency. those links. And here also, two months, at least two months, any European professors from your institute can stay here with, I think, it's 2,000 euro per month, and that will be the honorarium. So that program is also there. And apart from that, I have requested Professor Swamidas. He is the head of the Department of Mining Machinery, along with my colleagues, that Whenever the new research scholars come, we will make you also the co-guide with your confirmation. And that is the less bureaucratic. We don't have to take any permission from your institute or our institute only there. So that way we can start and then we'll go well, to some MOU and other parts. Yes, sure. And I will send you the link to, to this agency after the seminar. But right, you need please, to know please. concerning the mining that uh, our university, maybe not, but we have uh, in Krakow, very beautiful city. This yes. is uh, uh, acad former Academy of Metallurgy in, and Mining. Now they right, changed right. the name. We have some, some, some professors, oh, from have our professors have passed out from their place. Yeah. I yeah. visited that place, Krakow, from. Oh, that you know the place. And uh, that, that uh, uh, applying for NAVA, you can apply for the distributed mobility part in Warsaw, part in Krakow. That is, is, is worth to know. That anyway, right. I don't want to take our time. It's um, already more than one hour. Again, I thank you uh, for the big effort to prepare such a wonderful presentations. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you are very, very welcome, really. And the participants that uh, actively participated in the presentation, I think that Leslie recorded uh, all the event. Uh, Leslie, uh, is there plan any plan to distribute this? Uh, Yes, yes. So the webinar will be available on YouTube. So I just need a couple of days uh, to put it online. And it will also be available on the Heritage Network website. Uh, I can share the link with you in the chat box if you want. Yeah, perfect. Okay. That is a very, very good point. OK, we have the link. And uh, I understand that uh, we are coming to plan the next event. The, do, you, do we have any? Any uh, plan, preliminary plan for the next seminar or not yet? Uh, we still have to identify a, a topic, but uh, our objective is to plan it within two months. So we'll keep uh, we'll keep everyone posted. Okay, that you will take a care about uh, spreading the message yeah. and uh, collecting the propositions. Okay, that thank you and thank I you. Thank, thank you, thank you, and thank you. All, all are welcome. welcome. Ah, all are welcome in IDSM.